What's going on YouTube? This is Jay Xavier Sports. Jaguars are one and oh baby. One and oh. Yes, so we keep we keep up the winning ways from last year, so to speak. You know, we won our home opener last year on the road, so uh, it's no different really than the start from last year. Hopefully we get to see a winning streak in the beginning of the year. Last year, you know, we won every other game to jump out the gate. So, uh, but still very excited to see us win. You know, I was nervous. Don't get me wrong. I was nervous there at the end of the fourth quarter. I thought the Giants were uh, possibly going to come back. Maybe, you know, they had a couple big plays uh, with Saquon with that 68 yard run at the end of the game. Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, he had a couple nice catches. Um, Towards the end of that game, I thought they were going to drive and score, but, you know, the defense held strong and the Jaguars did just enough to win the game. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, talk a little bit about the game, the Odell Beckham Jr. and Jalen Ramsey matchup. It wasn't really that much, um, you know, we didn't really see too much uh, of, of any altercations or any, you know, uh, you know, we saw a lot of hand fighting and, you know, we saw Jalen Ramsey be physical at times, but. For the most part, you know, Odell Beckham Jr., 11 receptions for 111 yards. So he pretty much, he did his thing. You know, he got his yardage. He had a couple times where he was open for a touchdown and Eli Manning overthrew him. So uh, for the most part, you know, I think I feel like the Jaguars defense will take what they got uh, from Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, the last game. That was a very good sign from the defense. We saw a team with a bunch of talent in, in the New York Giants. You know, they got Evan Ingram. Uh, Sterling Sharp, who's a very good wide receiver, and then obviously with Saquon and Odell Beckham Jr., you know, how is this defense going to look versus good talent? And you see the defense hasn't lost any, hasn't lost a step. They still got the same mentality they do last year, the ball hawking mentality. We saw Miles Jack with the pick six. They pretty much sealed the deal uh, early in the fourth quarter. But, you know, like I said, you know, with Saquon Barkley's long, you know, 68 yard run, that happened directly after Miles Jack got the pick six. So, you know, it was a um it was a bit of back of a bit of a back and forth game in the fourth quarter. Uh but overall, you know, like I said, the Jaguars did just enough to win. I want to focus on, like I said, Blake Bortles. Uh to start the game, the Jaguars had a couple good drives going. Uh the very first drive we had, um we had to settle for a field goal. And early in the first quarter, you know, we saw the offense um you know, they drove the field, they got in the red zone, and they got a couple, you know, a couple field goals out of it early on and a um, and a, a touchdown before the first half. But, you know, I really feel like we could have got a lot more points on the board. We got to catch the ball, you know. Uh, there uh, there was a couple times on that first drive where we, we, we dropped the ball. I think Dante Moncrief had a drop, um, and I think D.D. Westbrook had a drop, but he ended up catching it the next play. But... Yeah, just overall, the offense, you know, our receivers are just not, <laughs> our receivers are not very good, guys. So, um, Blake Bortles, as much crap as he gets, you know, he's not really throwing to nobody, you know. Um, and then, you know, when we saw Fournette leave the game um, in that first half, you know, the offense definitely, definitely did not look the same after he left. So, you know, the interception with Blake on the next offensive drive, um, I feel like Dante Moncrief has, you know, he's got to fight for that ball. And we saw in this game, Dante Moncrief is not a receiver that's going to catch a lot of jump balls this year. So uh, we, need to, we need to stop uh, trying to force him deep on that one-on-one -on -one coverage. I know one-on-one -on -one coverage is usually uh, what you look for on those deep patterns, especially with a guy with a bunch of speed like Dante Moncrief. But in this first game, he didn't really prove that, you know, he can take over that reins of being a number one wide receiver. And I do really feel like the Jaguars should, should address that number one wide receiver uh, somewhere in free agency. Um, I don't really know who's all available. I know Jeremy Macklin's still available. Uh, Des Bryant, obviously still available. But guys, I really think we're going to need some help in this wide receiver group. Uh, if we don't have a number one guy that can demand the ball and that can uh, make plays consistently for this offense, then you know we're going to see a lot of games like we did uh, this past Sunday, especially if Fournette's gonna, uh, not going to stay healthy for the season. You know, we're going to we're gonna have games where we're gonna struggle offensively because, and, and it's not because of Blake Bortles. Um, we saw later on in the game, Bortles found a hole and he, uh, you know, he rushed for that 41 yard uh, gain. And you know, that drive, you know, didn't lead to points either. We know the things that Blake can do. He runs the ball very well. He's not a mobile quarterback, but he can, uh, or he, he's not a running quarterback, but he can 
be a mobile quarterback when you know when need be. Uh, we have to get Blake going in different type of ways because these receivers just aren't getting open and we got to find different ways to move the ball. And I feel like we did some of that in the first half, but obviously, like I said, Fournette was on the field. So but even on that drive, we went up 6-3. It was two chances to score a touchdown. One, we had a chance for um, Austin Safarian Jenkins. He actually caught the ball. It was a touchdown, but it got called back because of uh, Andrew Norwell hands to the face. And um, Andrew Noel, just to give a quick review of his game, I thought he, I thought he played okay. He definitely not worth the money that we gave him. Uh, but for what we asked him to do, and you know, for it being his first game and him missing most of the preseason, he played okay. Uh, Blake Bortles threw a, almost a near another interception, a near interception, but the ball tipped up to Niles Paul and it hit Niles Paul right in the hands, and he dropped it in the touchdown or in the end zone. That would have been a touchdown. So. Uh, you know, a couple missed opportunities on that second drive to get points, and we end up going up 6-3. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse in the first half. I feel like it could have been like 21 or like 20, 24 to 6 in the first half. And the final score, we, we could have easily, I think my final prediction for the score was 29 to 14. We won 20 to 15. So I knew our defense probably wouldn't give up no more than two scores. But our offense, our offense really has got to pick up the pace if we want to um, win some, you know, win some big games this year, like next week versus the Patriots. So um, we saw how the Patriots looked versus the Texans. They were able to move the ball early in that game. And that's one thing the Jaguars need to work on is find, find ways to score early in the game. Get out to that early lead because this team in particular, this team plays very good with the lead. And... Um, especially when we got the the two possessions, you know, leading by two possessions, ten points or more. So, um, is that you know this defense is going to be really hard to slow down. So that's why I feel like if this offense can get off to a quick start, you know, um, we're going to be very successful this season. But yeah, hoping the Jaguars go two and oh, two and oh, that would be pretty decent. And if we can beat the Patriots, I feel like this team can beat anybody. So. Next week, next week's going to be a huge week. Um, but that's all I got for you guys today. This is Jay Xavier Sports signing off. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.